over back in the UK, where British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak says his government was setting about making the UK the best place to invest in. He made this disclosure at the 2023 Global Investment Summit. The summit, a bid to restore Britain as Europe's top foreign direct investment FDI destination, took place after Mr Sunak announced £29.5 billion of private sector investment in Britain. We are setting about making this the best place in the world to invest and do business. Now, I'm unashamedly proud of Britain, and there is a growing momentum right here in the UK right now. Don't just take my word for it. PwC survey this year of thousands of global CEOs rated the UK the most attractive investment destination in Europe. Like Tata, BMW, and just last week, Nissan, investing billions into automotive and electric vehicle manufacturing. Or Microsoft, announcing today two and a half billion pounds for critical AI infrastructure, in addition to all the leading AI labs who already have their European offices here. And I believe that allowing you to keep more of the return on your capital, our country becomes more competitive as a place to invest, grow, and create jobs. And make no mistake, we are cutting taxes. Not only do we have the lowest corporation tax rate in the G7, last week we announced that we would make full expensing permanent. That means you can write off the cost of many capital investments in full. Our new high potential individual visa means that if you're a young person who's graduated from a global top 50 university, you can just come to the UK and stay here with your family for two years to just explore, work, study, invent. Nothing like that exists anywhere else in the world. And it tells you everything about our pro-innovation, pro-growth, pro-business philosophy. So I passionately ask for two things, that um, the theatre is supported by government, a little more perhaps than it is at the moment. And I also passionately ask you, if you are thinking of investing, think of Britain first and think of our theatre. New Zealand's new right of centre government have been sworn in today at the government house in Wellington. The parliament is expected to sit next week and begin working on new policies, including a new central bank mandate and lifting a ban on oil and gas exploration. New Zealand General Governor, Governor General Cindy Kairo, who represents British monarch King Charles III as head of the state, swore a national party leader, Christopher Lixon, in uh, the New Zealand's 42nd Prime Minister, along with ministers of his cabinet. Okay. I, Christopher Mark Luxon, swear that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance to His Majesty King Charles III, his heirs and successors according to law, so help me God. Uh, it is a huge honour to be appointed Prime Minister, and I want you to know that we'll be working closely with you over the coming years. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I think we have a ministry of a strong, productive, unified team that actually will deliver for all New Zealanders. We now have a responsibility to deliver for New Zealanders, to give them clear, demonstrable and measurable improvements in the quality of their lives. And I look forward to working with each and every one of you to make a positive difference as we drive out this agenda of our government. To trilateral relations now, the foreign ministers of China, Japan and South Korea have met in the port city of Busan, seeking to restart cooperation among the Asian neighbours and pave the way for a summit of the three leaders. China's top diplomat Wang Yi said the three countries should play an active role in promoting regional and global development with a more progressive manner and attitude. The Japanese foreign minister, Yoko Kamikawa, greater tri trilateral cooperation will contribute to regional peace as the international security situation has become more severe and complex than ever. Meanwhile, South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin says it's important to further institutionalize trilateral cooperation, adding that he looks forward to ensuring that the trilateral summit will be held as soon as possible. And the Beijing court began compensation hearings for the Chinese relatives of victims on board Malaysia Airlines flight MH370 
which mysteriously disappeared over the Indian Ocean almost a decade ago. Over 150 Chinese passengers were on the flight, which vanished en route from Kuala Lumpur to Beijing on March 8, 2014, becoming one of the world's greatest aviation mysteries. Rather. There was a heavy police presence outside Chongyang District People's Court in the downtown Beijing early hours of today before the hearing began. Relatives who spoke to the media afterwards demanded the resumption of search efforts and for Malaysia Airlines to directly communicate with families as well as provide them with psychological counseling. Many said this was more important than any monetary compensation. Thai police say a para-athlete and former soldier has shot his bride and three others before killing himself on his wedding day. 29-year-old Tatarong Suksuk and 44-year-old Kanchana Penchutek were married on Saturday in Northeast Thailand. According to reports, he left the wedding party abruptly, returned with a gun, shooting his wife, a 62-year-old mother and 38-year-old sister. Thai media citing what guests at the party told the police that the couple had an argument during the party. It also reported that uh, Chat Rong had felt insecure about the age gap between him and Kanchana. The conversation and awareness around gender-based violence continues as women across Latin America and Europe took to the streets to call for an end to gender violence. Though they've been, they've been raising their voices for years, they continue to face discrimination, sexual exploitation, domestic assault, and even femicide. The United Nations designated November the 25th as International Day for the Elimination of Violence Against Women. Here's more in this report. Thousands of protesters gathered in Rome on Saturday to call for an end to violence against women following the death of a 22-year-old university student who was reportedly murdered by her ex-lover earlier this month. Italian lawmakers have vowed to clamp down on violence against women, backing a raft of measures to expand protection for vulnerable women at risk and prevent femicide across the country. Meanwhile, hundreds of women marched in the Peruvian capital of Lima to demand justice for victims of femicides in the country, marking the International Day of Elimination of Violence Against Women. <laughs> Through chants and waving placards, demonstrators brought attention to the issues of gender-based violence, including rape, child pregnancies, and murder. So far in 2023, authorities have registered 110 cases of femicide. <laughs> and over 110 cases of gender-based violence within families. Over in Mexico City, where hundreds of protesters took to the streets, including human rights activists and feminist organizations, to demand justice for femicide victims in a country where on average 10 women are murdered per day. It's the same in Madrid as thousands of people march calling for an end to violence of patriarchy and demanding affirmative action from governments. Under the slogan, it's over, thousands of protesters march across Grand Via Avenue wearing purple clothes and chanting against violence. In the meantime, hundreds of Argentine women took to the streets to call for an end to gender-based violence and defend their rights to legal abortion following the election of right-wing libertarian Javier Millet, who they say posed a threat for the rights of women. This is actually a very beautiful story. Thousands of women in Brazil have been finding help in overcoming gender-related violence through an online platform that connects them to an extensive network of pro bono lawyers and therapists. Enrica Duncan is a director of a Brazilian NGO called Map of Support, which was founded in 2016 to help survivors of domestic and sexual violence. MAPA has been able to, to register over 12,000 um, volunteers, psychologists and lawyers, 
And we also register women that are then connected to the demands that they decide they need. According to recent United Nations data, 19% of Latin American women between 15 and 49 were subjected to physical or sexual violence last year. And in 2021, more than 12 women per day were murdered every day. Quick stories from Africa now, where Sierra Leone has lifted an indefinite nationwide curfew imposed on Sunday after armed men attacked a military barracks and prisons in Freetown. However, a, night, a new night curfew is to begin from 2100 to 600 local time every day until further notice. Local media reports normalcy in the capital with military patrols and checkpoints on the streets. A delegation from ECOWAS and the Nigerian government are expected to be in Sierra Leone in solidarity with the government. Diplomatic missions in the country as well as the Commonwealth Secretariat have also issued statements of solidarity to the government. President Julius Maada Buo addressed the nation saying most of the leaders of Sunday's unrest had been arrested and will be held accountable and that investigation is ongoing. There was a breach of security at the military barracks at Weber Force in Freetown. Some individuals attacked the military armory and other locations in Freetown, including Pademba Road Correctional Center. In the event, prisoners escaped. The attackers have been repelled by a combined team of gallant security forces and calm has been restored. Most of the leaders have been arrested. Security operations and investigations are ongoing. We will ensure that those responsible are held accountable through due process. I thank all citizens for complying with the security measures and advise everyone to remain vigilant and to cooperate with the security forces. Fellow Sierra Leoneans, in times like this, we are reminded of the importance of national unity. Let us not succumb to fear or division. Let us come together as one people, one nation, our strength lies in our unity, and it is through solidarity that we can overcome challenges that come our way. Syrian President Julius Mada Bio. Finally on the program, Moscovites woke up to a snow-covered city after overnight heavy snowfall. Parts of the city were buried in massive snow drifts, disrupting transport, delaying flights, making it tough to get around for pedestrians. Moscow has already seen several snowfalls this year, but the overnight one was very heavy this year. The city's mayor, Sergei Zobanin, issued a warning asking residents to use public transportation if possible. There have not been reports of any victims or infrastructure damage. According to the weather forecast, the snowfall is expected to continue for the next two weeks in a row, but with lower volume. That's our show this evening. Many thanks for watching. I'm Melissa Walker.